Okay. All right. Um, so call to order. We're calling our June meeting to order. Um, and uh, I hope you guys had an opportunity to look at the May minutes. Were there any, were there any, anything about the May minutes that we need to go over before we get started on that? No? Okay. Um, so the, the first thing under communications um, is actually um, the critter that, fence. I'm sorry. I think yes. we need to uh, approve those. Approve the minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, a motion okay. to approve. All right. We got a second there from Glenn. Okay. Thank you. The uh, main minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, so the first thing on the communications is the uh, the critter fence needs, and the I spoke with uh, Bonnie at the garden about the young woodchucks climbing up the little one foot fence, chewing into our nylon fence, and then hopping through. Um, so there's a fence repair kit up there, but that's just a band aid. Um, and Bonnie said she had the same problem at her home because she had the same kind of fencing at her home. And she put up a four foot metal and that the smaller end, obviously the larger, if they climb the four foot metal on the netting, they wobble, they fall down. Um, because while they can climb a chain link fence very easily, I've seen them do that <laughs> um, on the netting, they just kind of wobble around. So I priced out 700 feet of the four foot fence. I went out and measured the garden um, and it's about 700 feet all the way around. So it's like 200 on either side. Um, and then I kind of estimated the, the front and the back judging from the two sides. So it's about 700 feet we would need. Um, so that with the price at Home Depot for the 100 foot fencing, which was 76, 53 or something for a hundred feet. Um, it would be like 780 something dollars with tax and all. Um, so I wanted to see if we could uh, use some money to buy that and then some materials to put that up. I don't know if we should get the little hog rings. Um, if we do want to get those hog rings, we, I think we need to get a new tool because that tool I believe was broken. You guys remember? Remind me what the rings are for. Just do Mark or Greg, do you remember the name of that tool? It's like a metal tool and the hog rings go in it and you put it over the fence, the two pieces of fencing and it kind of clips around it and puts a little ring around the two pieces of fencing. So you don't have to go with zip ties. Basically. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, we probably need a new one of those tools anyway. So um, there would be a cost to those as well. I can go down. I can go down and take a look at Home Depot and you know kind of uh, ask somebody what what the tool is and how much it is. Glenn. Oh, you're muted. The space bar doesn't work. <laughs> you have to hold uh, yeah. it down, I think. I was just wondering if if, uh, if anybody had an idea how expensive it was. The other question I have is, um, how does it attach to the bottom? Same thing? Um, yeah, we already have the bottom perimeter one foot up and one foot out under the ground to keep them from digging under. That was installed when we originally, the second year after we put in the fence, or even maybe even the first year we put in the fence. Um, so it would really be attached to the post with, I would say, staples. And then to the existing deer netting with those hog rings, or I think they're called hog rings, or what we've been using which is zip ties, which isn't the best thing to use because um, I think that would be a lot more expensive than the hog rings and the tool. So um, I'm thinking that, you know, overall the whole cost is probably going to be close to 
So, but we know we have to pay um, for fence repairs and, and it is in our budget as an item. Um, so we just kind of have to make a decision about that. Um, anyone have any thoughts? I don't know that we've got a whole lot of options. I mean, if they if they figured out how to do that, they're just going to keep doing it. So I think we're we're going to, and, and it'll be a fairly permanent repair as well. So yes, it would, and I think it would be a very smart repair to do. Um, and I think for our membership, it's important that, you know, obviously we're doing the best that we can to keep the critters out. They're not always going to be out, but <laughs> we got to do the best that we can with it. So I'd be in favor of it. Okay. Nancy submitted her proxy vote. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll take a look at Home Depot, see, what, see what's there. Yeah, I mean, I know the fencing is going to be like 780 bucks. Sabrina? I just, I feel like the last time we had to get that tool, it was something special we had to get from a certain company. Yeah, there was a company in Williamson, but, um, you know, it might be more accessible now with Amazon and everything. I mean, you're talking 11 years ago, 10 years ago. Well, yeah, 10 years ago, we put up the fence. Just a reminder, we can't buy from Amazon. Yes, yes. Um, and I don't know if, I would guess the town would still have a um, account with that company we worked with. They were in Williamson, Dave has that information. We might even have their, actually not might, I do have their paper in the binder. I do. They run anywhere from Looks like sixteen ninety nine up to like twenty five bucks. Okay, not bad. I found so, it for thirteen dollars, but unfortunately, it's on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can get it at Home Depot or from this particular company in Williamson, I think we'll be good. Um, and if they're cheap enough, I would get more than one so that more than one person can be working at a time. Otherwise, oh, yeah. you've got one person doing all the, you know clicking along the fence and it just, that's not efficient. All right. Um, so I guess I'm going to ask if we can vote on spending approximately 850 to $900 on fence repair this year. All in favor of that, of fence repair? I can't vote, but do we have a quorum? Oh, Greg, one, two, Three, I'm here. four, five. Nancy is here. there. So we actually have, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. We have six of us here. So I think we're good. Um, okay, so I, I'll go ahead and work with Sabrina on the purchasing of that. Mark, was it at Home Depot that tool? I didn't see one there. Harbor Freight has one. Um, although it looks a lot simpler than the other ones I've seen. Um, the other ones were all online stores, so I don't know. Amazon, a web restaurant, Adam. Um, I'm not sure who, else, who we can order from as far as online. Okay. I'm, I scrolled across just now and called Lyle Hog Ring Tool, 21 bucks at Home Depot, but you probably have to order it. Okay. So that's all okay. right. We can do that. We'll get on that. The sooner we do that, the better. Because um, I know people don't want to lose, you know, the crops they put in. Certainly not. So, All right. um, let's see. So, uh, swallow wart in the uh, in the wooded area on the nature trail. I went in and I cut some of it down. Want to keep trying to kind of mitigate that as best that we can. So, if you, I'll put it in the sprout too. And I have to do another um, sign up genius and maybe I can get people to go out there and take their weed eaters and knock that that invasive down because um, it's not native and it's not good for our um, monarchs. Rain barrel and gutters. I'll let Glenn let everybody know. I, I don't think everybody heard. So 
Go ahead, Glenn. Tell us what you got. Yeah, well, uh, Nancy um, and Dot picked up the gutters today. Um, we have, I believe, six 15-foot uh, lengths with all the accoutrements that go with it. So that's the miters, the connectors, the downspouts, the sealers, the hangers. They, they gave us everything. So, um, you know, we're very thankful for that. And um, I have a connection with someone that knows how to put up gutters. So I'm going to be reviewing that hopefully this week. And, you know, the hope is that the gutters go up um, soon and later. Uh, Mark mentioned, you know, the, you know, where are they going to go? And if there's two back um, barrels, how are we going to do that? I think we need to think on that a bit. Um, but I think we're good. I think we have everything we need. That's excellent. <laughs> and the guy there was so nice, really. He was, I, I got the business card so we can send a thank you card to them. Um, and Sarah also brought us the, um, one of the rain barrels, which is um, already available to us. And I will get the second one, um, see if it aesthetically or whatever works out. And I think we'll have both, you know, so I can get one too. Um, question on, are we going to have an official dedication on it? And if we do, um, you know, how do we publicize that? And how do we put these people that have been so generous, um, concrete and, and, and this, um, how do we put their name out? Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah. So in conjunction with the Penfield Rotary Club, who, uh, provided a great deal of the, the funding for this project, they would like to uh, participate with that. We have a publication or a promotion committee that's willing to help with this, um, to reach out to the media and we could probably work with Sabrina as well. I know you've done things like that. Um, yeah, we'd want to invite, um, the town, obviously the, uh, folks from the rotary, the gentleman that helped pour the, the cement, donate the cement, the gutter guy, the, the Eagle scout and his family and the troop and, and do an official yeah, yeah. ribbing cutting ceremony. We also have another scout who uh, built the furniture that as soon as the cement is dry, it's ready to be delivered. Daniel Moore. So. And I, I will say that we will, um, the, the scout who built it, Ryan, he um, has already ordered a plaque for, for himself and, and Rotary. Um, so as a committee, we should order another plaque to no. put up with the, the name of our Mason and our gutter guy. Um, I think that would be the right thing to do. I'm not sure where you get something like that, but we can figure that out. Yeah, well, maybe order it from the same place that Ryan got his so they match. You should put one on the... Penfield Trophies is great too. That's oh, we get yeah. I mean, they're stuff. right here. I'm going to yeah. ask them. No yeah. So Nancy recommended. And hi, Chris. Sorry. And probably one on the picnic table too, something like that. So, so we can schedule that. And Sabrina, you know, we'd want to invite the appropriate dignitaries from the town. Uh, so maybe you can propose a date. Okay. Um, I think to at least be in phase four um, so that we can get some people yep. close enough to each other to take a picture. Um, so um, we might be looking at the end of July and August. I think that's okay. We still got some work to do. That sounds great. Um, is there anyone who wants to reach out to Penfield Trophies and find out how much a little plaque would be for those things for us? I can do that. I don't mind doing that. We work with them all the time. All right, so, Sabrina, you can do that. And make, like I said, maybe find, we can see what Ryan's looks like and try and get them. They don't have to match, but it might be nice. Uh, yeah, Ryan did send me an email at one point with, and I, I feel like maybe the company he was working with does scout things. So I, I, uh, I'll check with him and see. All right. Um, so. Seminars is next, and, and Glenn had an idea about seminars. So I'll let Glenn kind of bring that up, and we'll see. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's there's been a few people I've talked to that have some very interesting ideas. Um, you know, if it be um, wild harvest, organic farming practices, um, you, you know, uh, um, four season gardening, you know, all things that are kind of related um, permaculture. Um, you know, so the idea, the fancy idea would be, hey, with our new gazebo, it would be great if we could get, you know, a drop and get a projector and have a community seminar series. Um, I've worked, I've, I've talked and reached out to the library, Peggy um, at the library, I haven't heard back from her. She coordinates, I guess, the, uh, the programming. Um, but my thought was that using the library together with the garden might be a good synergy. Um, they already do some seminars. So that's the thought. Um, it, it's in its infancy. Um, I already probably have three or four people lined up that would be a very interesting, um, interesting subjects. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. I, I really think that's a great idea and a great way to use our, our outdoor space too. I mean, yeah, the only challenge I can tell you is we don't have power. So plugging in uh, projection devices, we'd have to come up with power source. <laughs> and allow oh, So good. Well, but, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, but I think it's a oh, great so idea. Really we have cool. done this before um, in partnership with the uh, Flower City Garden Network. Um, and Nancy's uh, facilitated that partnership. So it's certainly something we can build on. Yeah, you know, on a kind of a broader scheme, um, a friend of mine um, is the director of agriculture for the city. I, I forgot the exact name, but you know, there's a potential there for uh, urban gardens and suburban gardens and a connection there that I think would be very interesting, but um, a broader subject, but yeah. I love that. I, I don't know, Glenn, you got some great ideas and it's, it's good to hear them. It's always, you know, it's always good to have some new fresh ideas. I'm, I really, I think that's great. Um, so we're at the part in our agenda that's public participation. Um, so if there's any public participating, I know that you can see this recorded. So, um, so action items, lots with bigger numbers were purchased. Um, and that was a request from last year for some of our garden gardeners, um, really trying to make our garden as accessible as possible. Um, and those locks that we had were a little difficult. So they'll be going up this weekend. Um, the town group with Sabrina went ahead and, and purchased them. And then we purchased a couple of new hose sprayers um, because there were some that were broken. And the ones that we buy that have the you don't have to squeeze them that you just push up with your thumb. A lot of our gardeners do appreciate those because again, those are more accessible for people who have like arthritis and things like that. So um, we got a couple of new ones of those because we had two of them, I think, break down. Did we get two of those, Sabrina? They only had one. So I'll get two more when I, when I find that they have some more in stock. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's a, yeah, I, I totally remembered that while I was talking. Um, so the next item is our budget. So I guess I'll let Sabrina, oh, Greg. One item uh, which we might put under action item. Okay. Uh, around the pad, there's a drop off of, on each, each side anywhere from two to six inches. We may need to uh, purchase some additional stone or something. And at the end of the ramp, that's about four or five inches. So, you know, for uh, handicap access, that, that's not going to work. So we have to do something there. Yeah, that's under our, um, we're going to talk about that when we get to the pad construction update, definitely, because that is something that was already discussed with the Mason. Um, so we have a couple of things that we need to kind of firm up there. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay. Um, so for our budget, I'm gonna see if I can do this screen share. Um, 
You gotta have it open, I think, and then yeah. click on it. Oh. Can everyone see that? Yeah, looks good. Look okay. I can. Okay. Um, so basically we have, uh, you, you have spent only $53 and 22 cents this year. And that was just at Home Depot with your, your purchase of the, um, equipment you just mentioned. Um, what is not in here that I have to get is the pasta dinner, uh, funds. Yeah. So, cause we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. Um, okay. so if you. Yeah, that information is at work. So the next time it's in the office, the next time I go in there, I'll, okay. I'll get that. So that's not added right now into our remaining. Correct. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, that is simply bed um, rental fees. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's looking good. All right. Any questions about the budget? We have under fence maintenance nine hundred and twenty dollars. That might be what we spend. I mean, we could always move money around, but yeah. Glenn. Yeah. So I know there was some discussion around keeping the birds out of the pergola there, um, and I'm wondering also moving forward, what are the maintenance costs um, for that? I'm assuming it's long term. When it happens, it happens. Um, but I don't know if we budget that in there or not, um, considering that budgets don't roll over. Yeah. Um, we're going to put hardware cloth up there to keep them out. Um, that was what one of the, um, ideas and we, we already have some actually in our shed. I don't know if we have enough, but we do have some in our shed already. Um, and in terms of maintenance on the shelter i know um well lisa do you want to say what you know yeah, I, I can <laughs> um so as a representative from the rotary as well the rotary would like to do a service project next month i believe in july and um put a clear coat uh finish protector layer on the wood of the shelter um i don't think we want to stain it right we're just thinking about a clear coat on it sealer yeah so they're, they're the wood willing... is real pretty i don't know that i would stain it yep so they're willing to do that as a service project and i think we've got some in the shed i don't know how much so we'll have to assess that and we might have to purchase that sabrina um and in terms of like maintenance costs for maybe keeping the birds out and such or just in general um those things are figured in our budget like structural maintenance um you know we've repainted other objects and then when we can we always have um people who work as service projects to help us too so um that's that's more or less how it goes yeah lisa thank you that's that's kind of what i was going for is and you know are we going to prime that do something to it or, or protect it yeah great Now we're at the uh, pad construction piece and about what Greg brought up in terms of the area around the pad and what needs to be done around the pad. Um, so we really need to get some more stone up um, near the front of the pad in the driveway to bring up the land and then maybe um, some soil also I'm not sure if the town has any way to get us stone or if we're gonna to need to purchase more stone there. Um, Sabrina, is there any way that we can get some driveway stone? I can check into that, yeah. How much do you think you'll need? I'm thinking for the front end there, probably like three yards. What do you guys think? That sounds about right. And I think around the pad's gonna take a lot more, but. So our original stone drop there was five yards. So just to give you a little context, we had five yards of stone in that pile. So I'm thinking to get the driveway 
area up to the ramp. And I'm hoping the town can help us because we're really trying to make it accessible and, uh, you know, for us just to be able to get that ramp in service. And then maybe we would be even be able to, you know, have people there that are, you know, are, are less able to, you know, walk in wheelchairs, whatever. So if the town can help us get that area just graded out properly to the ramp, that would really be a big plus for us. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to a couple people. Um, uh, Mark, how? Yeah, we talked about um, needing railings on that ramp or whether we needed to have railings. So um, I don't know if, if that was discussed anywhere else, but um, the other thing is, and Sabrina, I don't know if you can check with the town if they've got road millings from when they do road work for the, the ramp part of it, that stuff packs down really well. I mean, it's just ground up asphalt usually, um, yeah. you know, and that, that packs down really well if, if we wanted something that's going to, you know, stay in, in place pretty good for the actual ramp part of it. Okay. I'll mention that. Yeah, that's an say, excellent though, idea. What I've seen of that, it seems to be in big, fairly big chunks, but I'll check it out. That, that's an excellent idea, the road milling. So also around the edges, and I know I was, Nancy and I were at the garden uh, with Glenn earlier today, and we were talking about just how to landscape around the edges um, and how to get that all kind of, you know, fixed up. It, it's gonna take some soil. I just am wondering, you know, if the, if the town can get us a, you know, get us an answer on the um, the road millings or the stone sooner than we can decide whether or not we're gonna need to uh, purchase it. Um, so just so we can finish that piece up. I mean, it's coming along like a lot, certainly a lot quicker than I thought it was going to go. And I'm so grateful to Mark Ogden and AAA Masonry. He's just, what a great guy. What a fantastic guy, really. <laughs> yeah, so. that's great. Um, anything else around the pad that you guys think we need to bring up? Just timeline-wise. So, uh, you know, if we could get fill in there and get some soil in there as a plan, you, you know, in late August, September, we'd seed it um, for next year. Is that your thought? I, I think that's a reasonable timeline as long as everything, can, you know, can come together. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of area to seed, but we, we definitely going to have to put some seed down and the fall is the best time for that. So there's not going to be any point putting seed down, you know, in the middle of now or in the middle of summer, which honestly, it's not even summer yet. So by the astronomical clock. So <laughs> Um, all right. Okay. Um, the small shed and, uh, scrap garbage disposal. This, this, the garbage is still there. The scrap is still there. Um, so yeah, I heard from Tim, our parks foreman. Um, and he said <sighs> he was going to work at getting that, um, taken care of the shed. He said may take them a while. Um, just because it's going to be kind of a big project. Um, so I will uh, keep you informed. They you did know. say they could do it for us. Yeah, he said that they could. Oh, well, that's that's great. Thank you. That's fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, we can wait as long as we need to for them if they're going to do it, because it is a big project. Um, and if they know what it's going to happen, I mean, it is empty right now. I threw some of the gutter stuff in there, but um it is empty pretty much oh okay great so there's no worry about do we have to get in there and empty it we emptied it at the end of last season perfect okay um oh i skipped the food forest update but i know that nancy is working on it oh i know i know there's a food forest update so the um the pasta dinner money which was raised by with the with us with the boy scouts that um uh is doing the food forest 
Ben Krenzer. Thank you so much. You knew that I couldn't. Read. Thank you so much. I have it written down somewhere. Um, ben Krenzer. And ben, Daniel Moore helped also. And Daniel, yep. Um, though that money, we want to use some to purchase soil from Firmagreen um, because it was fundraised for that purpose. We shouldn't really have to vote on it, right? Because we fundraised it for the purpose of this Eagle Scout project because the scouts were there and they served the food. <laughs> um, so does the town have an account with Vermigreen? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so can we get one? I will look into it. Thank you. Okay. The guy there, I think his name is Ryan over at Vermigreen. He's a real nice guy. Um, so. And then we can order What is it, Mark? I, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. If you could finish your thought. Just tuck, going back to the small building, we should probably make sure that, or decide where we're gonna put it and make sure that that's laid out just in case they get to it sooner rather than later. We, so that's we an excellent point. Make sure we've got that marked out. I think that they won't, I, I think I'll hear when they're gonna do it and I think they won't do it without touching base, but. Still couldn't yeah. hear. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to level some land anyway, so it's a good idea for us to meet up there and maybe look at it. If you know, if you want to go up there, Mark, and you know, mark out the spot where you where it should be, you know, then we'll, you know, we could I don't know string it or whatever. Well, that's what I wasn't sure. I didn't know which way we wanted it to face. You know, how close we wanted it to the fence, or did we want it? over more towards the compost bins. I think, I think it's something we need to decide exactly where we want it and then we can work on. Right, and we're also gonna buy new pieces of beautification fence so that behind the pavilion, you won't see that, you know, we'll get some nice fencing, you know, a couple of pieces of fencing to put up there. So it, it looks, you know, beautified. Um, yeah, we'll have to meet up there and take a look at it. I know that we had talked, and I think, Greg, I don't know if you were there, Greg, we had talked about running it east-west where the compost bins start. Um, we talked about running it east-west rather than north-south, and then it would be less likely to be hit as badly by the wind, too. Oh, that that's correct. And uh but we still have to move quite a few blocks. I think the blocks are in the, at the end of that. That's yeah, we do. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, I got to put, I got to put another sign up genius out, and we'll uh, we'll put that on the list. I got a bunch of things I got to put on the list. Also, there's quite a few tarps that are back there that you know we have to put somewhere too. I put a block on top of them so they wouldn't blow away. So. Yeah. Okay. Lisa. So um, re going back to the soil purchase, Sabrina, would it be helpful for you to have a quote to work from? So are, gonna... are we talking about the um, the thing that the, the the rocks for the around the the food forest? Food for soil. soil. I apologize. Okay. We will need to have quotes if you're going to buy soil. Yeah, we need to have three. Even if we're using the fundraising money. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll get them tomorrow. Um. Okay, I'm not sure where we were on the shed. There, I think. Was there anything else we needed to talk about with the little shed? I don't, okay. Um, water update, critter update. I feel like I really already covered it. The water barrels, I'm gonna swap out the big green water barrel for two smaller uh, water barrels that I have here that we can use because that big green one is busted. Um, and the shorter ones will be easier for people to reach into because some of our um, less tall gardeners Again, always trying to 
have as much access as we can because, you know, we have all different types of people and some of them can't really reach down into that barrel. And some people choose to use the water barrels as opposed to the hoses because they don't want to roll out and roll up hoses. So, um, and I did get an email from one gardener who said that since we've been fixing the holes in the fences, her greens have not been eaten and she was very thrilled. So that, of course, made me feel good because, <laughs> you know, people don't want their greens to get eaten. Um, but otherwise, yeah. I think every bed in our garden is taken care of except for two, right? Go ahead, Greg. Uh, uh, the bed that, the two beds that uh, Chops occupies, those are in pretty bad shape. Uh, should we get in touch with him to see if he wants us to start maintaining them? Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to say, because June 30th is the deadline. And it really, I mean, it's so dry right now and nobody's watering it. So it's not really as overgrown as it could be. In fact, I think the weeds are dying at this point, which is good. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to reach out to him and Sandy and, and see what... Um, what's going on, but otherwise I don't see any other. He has really... an excellent crop of garlic. <laughs> he has he an does. excellent crop of garlic. Mm -hmm. A lot of garlic. So. I'll take the scapes. <laughs> the scapes are beautiful. Um, yeah, so I'll reach out to him and I'll, I'll find out what's happening with his garden bed. Um, and the only thing that I forgot to mention was I, I hope that you've seen that our uh, our raspberries are coming back and they look much healthier. They're not as brown and they had something. Bonnie told me what it was. I don't remember. Um, but they we might get a crop in the fall, I think. So that, I wanted to tell you, too, when I was up there delivering the things from Home Depot, I saw a lovely snake. So. Got some there critters was, doing their jobs. Yeah, there was a beautiful one in Paulette's garden, a huge snake. So, yeah, I that's saw, good. I saw a big garter snake in her garden, huge one. Yeah, wow. I saw the same one. He's big. Like, could probably eat a chipmunk big. Nice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully that means he's well fed. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, on our held items, we have ribbon cutting, which we talked about. Um, the owl nesting boxes, I believe Ben, who's doing the um, who's doing the food forest, is also going to work on, and still looking for a cherry picker to put up the bat house, um, and the solar purchase is still on held. I'm sure that we'll get to that. Oh, I had to do one other water update. The spigot, the last spigot by the children's garden is really leaking like we have to replace that spigot and i don't think we have an extra so we might need to purchase a new spigot um unless there's something i can do like the, the water comes up through the middle hole of like the handle do you guys know what i'm talking about okay i don't know if that's something that can be fixed or if i just need to put a new spigot can be fixed it's not worth it because something else will fail after <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll check the shed and see if there's a spigot in there, and then I'll get my plumber to work on that. Um, <laughs> who's sitting in, he's sitting over here in my living room like, what, mister, you're going to deal with the water again? <laughs> um, so that one's really leaky. I know that. I did go around and change some washers at one day to try to get some of the leaks out, but I know there's probably more to work on. That should probably be something we put in on an annual work day in the spring is go around and change all the washers. I mean, as much as those things are turned on and off, they're going to leak every year. I mean, they yeah. every year and they probably just put it on the list of this is something that's got to be done before we turn the water back on. And we still have four or five washers in the shed, but we probably need to get some washers. So um, that might be something that we have to put on the list too the washers and the faucet. All right. Anything else for the good of the order here? Go 
Go ahead, Glenn. Oh, sorry. Mark, go ahead. Sorry, I thought Glenn was going. Um, I had talked to you about, I, we, Kathy and I were over there one night and the gate was wide open. Um, and I know somebody else said they'd been over there one time and it was wide open. Um, and I mentioned to you about putting a, a spring or something on there, putting a closer yeah. on the gates. Now, granted, it's kind of a pain because the gate can only open one way if we do that. But with that woodchuck living right across the, the parking lot, if he saw that gate open, he's going to be through there in a heartbeat. So it, if you know how to put a spring on it, we can get the... The front gate won't open all the way, so there's no point in putting a spring on that. Like you can open it like this much and squeeze through. Um, it's that side gate. If we think it's a good idea to put a spring on it, and you you can tell Sabrina what you need, and we can get that from Home Depot because I can't imagine it's very much money. No, it shouldn't be. I might even have something here. I got to go out and look in my shop and see if I've got something laying around it. Um, oh, but uh, I'm assuming that it'll open out towards the parking lot, it'll be the, the way that it'll open. Um, that would be a better way, yeah, you know, opening out. Yeah. So I'll have to put a stop on the on the one upright so that the gate doesn't swing all the way through. Okay. Which, Do you think that it will discourage people from latching it if it just slams behind them? Well, I, I guess that's a question. I mean, if it's shut, I don't think the woodchuck's going to get in. Mm -hmm. Um, cause he'd have, well, I don't know if they've learned to climb the fence, they might learn how to pull it open. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they are smart. You know, but, uh, yeah, I guess that, that is a question if, if they're going to remember to, to latch it, or maybe we put a different latch on there. Um, and that you know I, what? I wish we had one of those latches, like they have on a pool thing where you have to push down to open. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, and that. How could we get one of those? Can we add one of those to our gate? I'd have to look at it and see. I mean, I'm sure we could. I'm sure we can figure out something. But and that I would have to buy because I know I don't have anything like that. Um, I think yeah. that would be a great thing. Even just on that side gate, the front gate, I'm not too worried about. But that side gate, my husband is saying a push latch, which I don't know what that is. But um, if if you can look, Mark, I think. You know, improving that gate latch would be a, a great thing for our for our fence. Okay, I'll take a look at it and I'll let it, let the committee know. I just want to make a point: whatever latch we need, we need to make sure we can put the lock on it. It's a reminder. Yes. Yep, and the lock's going up this weekend. So, <laughs> Glenn, did you have something? I yeah, just saw in the minutes. Um, the solar panels is should that be brought up now or that's under held items so um we're not taking any action on it right now but it's something that we don't want to forget about <laughs> got it my confusion sorry it's okay great just one thing that uh, is probably going to need some maintenance i know a couple people have looked at it uh the compost is getting really over full especially there's a cup one that's bursting out of the shed i put a couple blocks in front of it to keep it from the screen from falling down but i'm i'm willing to go down and you know toss some of it around and you know do some clearing but uh you know it's it's almost getting out of hand i I know Mark has, you know, done quite a bit of work on it over the years. Yeah, and I know that when I put out the sign of genius, some people email me and ask me, well, I would do the compost, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's, you know, it obviously it's people are nervous if they're they they haven't done it before. They don't want to do something, you know, that they might think someone thinks is gonna think this is wrong. So it's really hard because we didn't have that work day. And um, you don't want to get a crowd around to do it either. You no, know, you don't. So you don't want to do um, that. We still go ahead, Glenn. What would your thought be of trying to set up a couple Berkeley composters? You know that rapid. Um, if we can harvest some of the grass, um, we can get that, and we can probably 
gosh, compost two or three of those in three months, two months, and cut what, that volume down by, by a lot. What do, you what do you mean a Berkeley composter? Can you explain that? So um, layering browns carbon with yes. green and doing that in a three by three at least, you know, a big pile, covering it, watering it, let it go. Right. But mm -hmm. turning it every two or three days. Yeah. Um, you know, so you could get someone that could adopt a pile and one of those piles can turn into awesome compost in, you know, I mean, 12 weeks, you know, yeah, uh, we're, we're kind of a slow compost. Um, but I mean, I can put that out there and see if people want to adopt a compost and turn it. We do, you know, tr obviously do not religiously layer our compost. Um, so I I will ask people to adopt a pile and fix it up and see what we get. Worth a try, so, right? I, I think the volume of what we have there, everything seems to be overflowing, right? So if we could get a couple of those to be taken care of by this, maybe there'll be an area so that more stuff can go in. You know, yeah, because we usually on our work day shake them out, we move them, and we end up with like, you know, three bins, empty three bins, and we just didn't do that. With worms and with uh, all the blocks available, we probably can add another one to get rid of some of the top stuff because every time we compost, we we gain soil, but we put put a lot back in of stuff that just have, hasn't uh, disintegrated or broken down. Yeah. So another building another uh, box might be worth it too. What about yeah, we worms? Have Would that make it go faster? Well, if you, if you bought like red wigglers or anything, but they really need a specific, um, it, they're kind of high maintenance worms. I mean, our regular worms, oh. Our regular worms are doing the job, the ones that live here that aren't really even native to North America because they came from Europe. But um, <laughs> the red wigglers, if you had them, you have to kind of maintain their environment. Yeah, and they don't survive through the winter, I don't think. No, they don't. No. I think, I mean, normally we don't have a, we have the issue in the spring when everybody's cleaned up their beds from the weeds. And we have an issue in the fall, maybe when everybody's cleaning out their beds. So I think if we'd have had the work day, um, you know, I mean, we've talked before about, um, you know, different composters and things, um, but it, it works pretty well just sitting there. Um, you dig out that stuff on top and there's a foot and a half, two feet of composted material. Greg knows when we've uh, worked on there, um, you know, it's just a matter of sifting it out. Um, I'd be happy that if there's people that have signed up that are, I'd be happy to meet people over there. I've, I've rebuilt the sifter um, with uh, with new fencing or new uh, hardware cloth on it. I, I have it here at the house. I just got to get it back over there. But I'd be happy to meet people over there and show them how we've done it um, in the past and then let anybody and tell them, you know, how to move stuff from one to the other and uh, go on from there. Okay. Uh, Glenn? Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Glenn. Hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, that Berkeley method is rapid and it's great, but it's labor intensive. So, Mark, I think you're right. Um, but that whole adoption thing, maybe, you know, we could mend the, uh, meld those two and have each been adopted by two, three, four people. And, you know, if they can go there weekly and turn it and what it would vastly expedite it. And maybe the work that, you know, Greg and Mark are doing um, could be to Fred. One thing we'd have to consider with turning it is you've pretty much got to have an empty. Don't you need to have an empty bed to turn it into? So you could you at most you could probably do one or maybe two and you'd have to have two empty beds for them to flip it into back and forth. Once once we go through that compost that's there, we're gonna get a lot of soil out of that um, because we haven't had our 
regular April workday where we, you know, harvest it out. Um, so I think I, I can make a sign of genius. And I think we also ask people to adopt even just to keep them tidy, you know, not necessarily to do the turning, but just to be the person who checks on it or maybe adds water. Um, and, and then we can, um, maybe get those cleaned out. And if we want, you know, if, if there's three of us and I find someone else who wants to be there, we can, you know, we would have to make a date to do it. Obviously it can't be like the, have it done by X date. We'd have to make a date and say, okay, this Saturday we're going to go out and we're going to do this compost thing. And we need two other people to help us and see who shows up. So, you know, if, if you want to give me a date, Mark, I'll throw that out and see if I can get two or three other people. It doesn't have to be right now. You can, you know, you can email it to me. Yep. I'll send you an email. Okay. Thanks. And then I'll just say, you know, we need a couple more people to help us with the compost. Obviously we can't be more than six people, right? Sabrina, six people. I think it's 10. Okay. Well, 10 wouldn't even fit in that area. <laughs> I mean, it would be real crowded. I think we'll go with six. <laughs> oh, Mark, you, Mark, you can send me an email and I'll, I'll help out too. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Glenn? Is there a resource that we have, and I know I've seen it in the Sprout, et cetera, but um, on how to take care of the compost. So if we had that list of Here's the duties. Here's what you need to do periodically. Um, I, I think more people might adopt. Um, I, I know there is a uh, there's a fear about the composting. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to write the duties down for me, Glenn, I can put it in the sprout this month. I've never written down the duties, and that's a good idea. I can throw it in the sprout. Yeah, I'm late. I don't know if I have the knowledge to tell you the truth. It sounds like maybe Mark or Greg have more of that um, in regards okay. to how the garden works right now. I know I do my hot composting here at home, uh, but it's yeah. hot and it takes a lot of maintenance. Yeah, I don't do hot composting at home. I do all cold, you know, because it takes a lot of maintenance. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I guess when we when we meet together on the compost, I can talk about what the duties are, Mark, on an email and, and maybe throw something in the sprout this month or next month. But also, whoever shows up will have a more. I mean, I know what needs to be done, but I, I don't know the best way to write it down for people. I know about, like, the rules for what you shouldn't put in there, what you should put in there, and all that stuff. I'm sure you could find something very generic online and and go off of that. That's true. Well, I'll, I'll run it by Mark first. Definitely. Cause he's kind of the, you know, the compost master. <laughs> he de facto <laughs> composting critters, things that begin with C. <laughs> um, anything else for the good of the order? So, Chris, I have some notes from the beginning of the meeting. Did you get notes throughout the rest of the meeting, Chris? I started um, about the locks. Okay. So, I'll send you the notes I have from the beginning. Okay. I was just typing it right on my agenda while I was talking. So, no. it's rough, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so, Chris got the rest of the notes after that, and I'll send her the first part of the notes. Okay. And there's also the video on the town site. It'll be up shortly, I guess. That's true. The video will be up short, shortly. Um, all right. Anything else for the good of the order? Motion no. to adjourn. Motion to okay. adjourn the meeting. Okay. We got a second. Okay. So the, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Have a good you. evening, everyone.